My friend Mike recently made a video where he calculated the acceleration due to gravity in Minecraft. I will leave a link to that video in the description. In his video, Mike does an experiment using this model, which is commonly known as the second equation of motion, and he actually shows how insufficient this model is, since it does not take into account the effects of viscous drag on the subject. He then suggests a better model, which I'm going to explain in this video. So for any falling body, there are two forces predominantly acting on it. The viscous drag on the object due to air resistance and the weight of the body because it has mass. Now if I'm to write an equation of motion for this body, I'll have the resultant force, let's call that F, is going to be equal to the force due to the weight or the weight of the object minus the viscous drag on the subject. Now the viscous drag is actually proportional to the velocity of the body and I could just say that the viscous drag is equal to V times B where B is a constant. We also know that the weight of the body is the mass of the body times the gravitational acceleration. So my equation of motion thus becomes MA for the force equals the weight of the object which is mg minus the viscous drag on the body which is vb. Of course acceleration is the change in velocity with respect to time which I can write using calculus as a equals dv dt and so I have m times dv dt equals mg minus vb. I can reorganize this to form a better differential equation. That's going to be m dv dt plus vb equals mg. All right? But we know that as the time of falling increases, there reaches a point where the body is not accelerating. At that point, which is known as the equilibrium point, the change of velocity with respect to time becomes zero and the body moves with the velocity known as the terminal velocity. So let's substitute zero for dv dt. All right, we have vb equals mg and v is mg divided by b. This special velocity is now known as the terminal velocity. Let me write that as v subscript t. This is very important. The terminal velocity is the velocity of an object falling through a fluid substance, in this case air, for which the acceleration is zero. So vt is terminal velocity. So let's solve this differential equation. So I have m dv dt plus vb equals mg. This is a first order linear differential equation and I can actually write it in a better way. If I divide through by m, I have dv dt plus b over m times v equals g. Of course, we can solve this by separating variables, but I'll prefer to use the integrating factor. If you don't know how to use the integrating factor, I have videos on that. You can check them out. I'll also leave a link in the description to my playlist of differential equations. So let's find the integrating factor. I'll call the integrating factor R. For this case, the integrating factor is exponent of the integral of b over m with respect to t, that's going to be exponent of b over m times t. Let's multiply this equation by the integrating factor. This now should be exact, and you can actually check that the left hand side of this equation is d dt of v exponent b over m times t.
If we assume that the body is released with initial speed 0, we can have this as our initial condition. The velocity at t equals to 0 is 0. I'll substitute the initial conditions in this general solution. So we have 0 equals gm divided by b plus a. So our arbitrary constant a is negative gm divided by b. Recall that the terminal velocity vt is gm divided by b. So it actually turns out that A is negative of the terminal velocity. Next, if we let y to be the displacement in the vertical direction, then I can write the velocity as dy dt, which is the change in displacement with respect to time. So I can write this equation as dy dt equals the terminal velocity times 1 minus exponent negative b over m times t and i can multiply dt on both sides so i have dy equals the terminal velocity vt into 1 minus exponent negative b out of m times t with respect to t let's take integrals on both sides i'll take the integral from 0 to some arbitrary displacement y. I also take the time from 0 to some time t. So with those limits, we have y equals and so y equals, if you just allow me to put some other constants here like g, and here, even here, and here. Basically, this does not change the meaning because I can just cancel them out as well. But then, I now have vt into t plus vt exponent negative b out of m times t divided by g minus vt divided by g so we finally get this beautiful equation of motion in fact i can make this better by putting a g here and a g here and i will write the displacement equation now as plus the terminal velocity squared over g exponent. Now watch here I have b over mg, which actually is the terminal velocity down here. And then I've got negative g times t. I'll tell you why I did that in a moment. Minus vt squared divided by g. Finally, that's uh, our equation that relates the terminal velocity, the displacement, the acceleration due to gravity and the time for a body falling uh, freely through a fluid. Now, this is a very beautiful model uh, to any mathematician and scientist because all the quantities here are known. And I think this is the reason Mike used this model because he could actually measure the displacement by calculating the number of blocks, counting the number of blocks. He could measure the terminal velocity. He could measure the time. And so the model accurately predicted the value of acceleration due to gravity in Minecraft. Thanks for watching this video till the end. Don't forget to check out and subscribe to Mike's channel, Dr. Wessel Coach. He makes great videos about math and Minecraft. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.